views and opinions of our advertisers and management of Pacific Telestations, LLC. This message is brought to you by the stations of KUAM. We're watching Buzz with Jess Luhan. Good evening, Guam. I'm Jess Luhan. Welcome to this edition of The Buzz. Exciting show tonight. We're continuing our program with the uh, Guam World War II survivors. Let them tell their stories uh, alive uh, here and live here in our studios. Uh, tonight, my in-studio guest is Vicente Titan from Taisipik. Uh, he's my primo. And... Uh, Hey, welcome. I wish he was uh, on better conditions, but this is to tell your story. My understanding, and I'm reading your story, you were only six years old when the Japanese invaded Guam. Please tell us. A six six year old, you, years old at that time, you grow up so fast that you become 21. When I first met the Japanese, the rifle and the banner is bigger than them. And my first memory of their of the uh, Japanese invasion. We were instructed and told to put up a white flag, displace it at the place of our residence. Resident. Mm -hmm. And if the Japanese patrol or official come by and they see no flag, uh, white flag, flag, flag flying, mm -hmm. automatically they will abuse you, hitting you on the butt of the rifle kick you, slap you, or take you in and arrest you. Now, now when, when the invasion, did you, where were you when, when the Japanese in, in, invaded Guam? We were at Nyamusa, uh, Georgia. Mm -hmm. That's where we were arrested in, is that we formed at Ashina, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but we uh, go up at Nyamu and sleep in the, in the nighttime. So when you, when, when the invasion, and then you say the Japanese uh, had come in, so how long after the invasion, the initial invasion, did they again reach up uh, up to Jonia, where again you had to, you know, get these white flags and, and put in your homes, display in your homes? How long after that initial invasion did that happen? Following the instruction that we have to put our uh, white flags. White flags, yeah. The next working day, we were instructed to go to the campus of uh, Jonia School okay. for indoctrination. We have a gentleman by the name of Mr. Bloss. I'm in Bossa, and he has a balcony on the second floor. Mm -hmm. Japanese officials were there with some Samoru that were temporarily assigned for leaders. Mm -hmm. And we were on the campus for indoctrination, so mm -hmm. they start telling us all the do's and the don'ts. Mm -hmm. And most of the thing that they tell us is the don't. Now, how and do then every 10 to 15 minutes mm -hmm. interval, they told us to face north mm -hmm. and bow for the emperor. We had a couple in front of us mm -hmm. bow, but they didn't bow enough. So they got a Japanese soldier mingling with the crowd. Mm -hmm. And this particular couple in front of us got beaten up because they did not bow to the liking of their uh, uh, Japanese soldiers. It, was, soldier. it wasn't the, the standard and bows. It was, yeah. They say something about, what am I bowing for? All yeah. I see is coconut tree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they want us to bow for the emperor. So after indoctrination, they told us everything that the emperor of Japan is our new leader. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're supposed to abide for everything that they want us to do. Then next thing I know, I was in line waiting to be vaccinated and attend their uh, crash course school. Mm -hmm. Six days a week from Monday to Saturday mm -hmm. from 7 until 5 o'clock in now, the now, evening. Now, what was this vaccination? Because I, I know the vaccinations at that time, and, and th that was a sure sign that, that someone was a survivor of the war when you saw either four or six of those. They called Bakuna, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, what, what was that for? What was, what was that? Well, they told us that they want to vaccinate us because uh, there's a disease going around, mm -hmm. and I don't want the uh, Japanese uh, dependent to catch anything from us. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, they vaccinate us with four in mm -hmm. Guam, mm -hmm. over in the other island, like Northern Marianas mm -hmm. Island, they vaccinate them with six. Six, okay. So okay. that differentiates the people from Guam from mm, okay. the Northern Marianas. Mm -hmm. So the, the scarring actually, kept, you, you, kinda, you knew where they were from. 
right. when, 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 when you saw that. So you, you were saying that they chose uh, some Chamorro le Chamorros to to basically translators and all that. How did they, How do you know how they went about to choose who were to, to be like leaders and to supposed to be translators? Well, the choosing is not on the Chamorro side. Oh, okay. The appointment is made by the Japanese okay. Uh, okay. official. Okay. We have two, one by the name of uh, Binabe. Mm -hmm. That's all I know of him. The other one by the name of Ichiara, mm -hmm. both from Saipan. Okay, okay. And as far as Binabe, mm -hmm. He is the most headed in interpreter for the whole Chamorro at, uh, in, in, in uh, Jonara village. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He was so hated that later on, when we had the concentration camp, the Chamorro from Jonara were having a working detail at the bridge, in Pagula Bridge, mm -hmm. and there was an uh, aircraft, a fighter aircraft, doing a strafing and he got killed. Mm -hmm. So our Chamorro people from Jonia, because of his experience with the uh, people that he was so hated, they took the time to drag him from Pogo Bridge all the way into the concentration camp. Yep. Mm -hmm. He was wrapped with the uh, mat made out of uh, rice straw. Mm -hmm. Bump, I mean, dump him right in the middle of the camp and they start yelling that Binabe is dead, he's gone, he expired. Now you could come out and take a last look of the person that mm -hmm. was so hated in the village as well. So, so uh, obviously he wasn't just a translator, he was obviously um, collaborating in the sense that maybe squealing on you guys or what you guys were doing. It's and two-faced individual. And, and, and you guys were being punished and beaten right. for, for, for things like that. you cannot trust him. He's mm -hmm. a spy, he's a spy for us, mm -hmm. for the Japanese. Mm -hmm. Very untrustworthy and he's, you can't trust him with a 15 football. Mm -hmm. Now, you were, at six years old, you were saying also that they, af after the indoctrination, you, you, you go to school, after school you go straight to the fields, I guess you had to work. No, in the morning we go to class, mm -hmm. from 7 to 11, 11 and 11.30 is our lunch. Mm -hmm. After 11.30, out in the field, and I was picked to be a, a what we call it in Chamorro, but then a Nibat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Translated in English, honey bucket. Mm -hmm. And my work detail is to go around, look for animal, and pick animal manures for fertilizer. Mm -hmm. That's why earlier I testified for the water preparation mm -hmm. that I was a walking maggots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At that time, we don't have no soap. My soap is the leaf of uh, lemoncina, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so I could get rid of the smell. But my job after 11.30 is to get the bucket, go around looking for, for tomorrow that race poetry and animal, pig, mm -hmm. goats, water buffalo, cow, whatever. And I start filling up those buckets with manure. And you had, you had a quota, right? You had a quota? Right, how five many? buckets. Yeah, and five. if I don't fill those five buckets, Gary there, I'll be slapped, kicked. And beat up. And this is you're, you're six years old. Six years old. They look at you that you are twenty-one. I mean, you must. I mean, because you 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 went from. I mean, you went from an innocent child to having a crash course on on life. I mean, knowing again, you know, right from wrong, and and, and so your innocence was taken away. They deprived me from my childhood. I'm supposed to be at home playing or looking for vendors or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I have to go to school, go to the field. We, what we do is we help the adults plant, mm -hmm. fertilize, harvest, and bring all the goods. There's a post located right across Buenos Market in Georgia. Mm -hmm. That's a, a post they set up that the people bring over every day mm -hmm. variety of fruit, vegetable, mm -hmm. whatever. And then there's a forced labor tomorrow with Japanese, uh, dry, you know, uh, soldiers accompanying mm -hmm. on their vehicle to transport these sure. goods to another area where mm -hmm. sometime down to Ghana or wherever the Japanese uh, mm -hmm. 
want to take them to. Now, it, it, go back to the schooling, because one, one of the chores that you had to do, the jobs you had to do in, in the morning as well, and, and I'm reading your story, that every morning you had to come, I guess, it, with the principal or you know, the instructor, you had to take around their, right, her uh, child on, and on a wagon? Yes, uh, me and uh, a female uh, by the name of uh, Consuelo Aguero, mm -hmm. we were instructed that we have to come early before the class start. And our principal, or we call him Sensei, mm -hmm. have a son. And he has a wagon that we have to drive him around the campus every morning. Now, how old is the son? Yeah. Uh, maybe around three or, okay, okay. or two, two and a half, three years old. So, so you were like babysitting for the... For, yeah. Not only babysitting, we were like a water buffalo with a cart that mm. we have to push him around the school campus. And when he start crying, the mother will come and start chewing on us. And then the, f the father will make us face each other, me and Consuelo. We face each other, bow down, then we start slapping each other for whatever uh, problem that we have. And we correct it by s slapping each other. So, you, so they force you to slap, they force you to slap Consuelo? Right. And, and Consuelo is forced to slap you? Force her to Turn around and slap me. That's their discipline. Wow. This is at six years old. Right. Then after we push him and dra drag him around the campus, we go in the class. 11 o'clock, we go lunch. 11.30, we're out in the field. Me and my bucket. Honey bucket, they call it. <laughs> You were really full of it at that time, huh? <laughs> and when I get off from class at uh -huh. 5 o'clock, I go straight home. They told me go straight down to the river and don't get out until you smell better. And get rid of some of that maggots you got crawling all over you. <laughs> you, and, and, and you had the scent of lemon, huh? Lemon uh, cedar. <laughs> when I go to pick my soap, I go straight to the lemon tree and start picking the leaves of the lemon. and. Squeeze it and then wrap it all over me. Ben, we're going to pay some bills. We're going to come back. We'll talk a little bit more about maybe what you saw. And then we'll talk about the experiences, of course, when the uh, U.S. liberation. All right.